and Lean Six Sigma, we're on a constant mission to improve our processes. And so one of the things that we often do is evaluate process capability. And so that's what we're going to talk about here. Now, before we jump in, let me mention if you're interested in a free white belt certification course, you can access one at sixsigmasociety.org. Now, process capability is the ability of a process to meet customer specifications, to meet their CTQs, without additional efforts. So the question is, how good is it as of today? Where are we right now? So here's just a quick question, a fun question. So who requires more effort to win the World Cup? So whoever requires more effort is going to be less capable. So in this example, Elon Musk, he's not a soccer player, so he's going to be less capable of winning the World Cup. R Ronaldo, we'd say, would be more capable. More capable at this point in time. Here's another way of thinking about it. Can Apple make a laptop as thin and as durable as the customer expects without additional effort? Or is there more investment needed to get there? And can they do those things consistently with minimal variation? What is their capability of doing that today? Now, here's another example. So what about process capability for producing weather-tolerant O-rings? So O-rings are used for insulation. And on the Space Shuttle Challenger, one of the reasons for the explosion was these O-rings. They weren't weather-tolerant. They didn't respond well in cold temperatures. As we assess our capability of producing weather-tolerant O-rings, one measure we might use is ring flexibility in cold temperatures. Now, when we calculate capability, we can look at the capability of ourselves. So we could ask, can we meet our customers' expectations? And we can also look at the capability of our suppliers. So who can provide us what we need? Okay, now let's talk about capability goals. So ideally, for a given CTQ, we want to be centered on target and within customer specification limits meaning capable. We want to be on target and capable. Okay, so if we're off target, that's a bad scenario. We are outside of specification limits. But the good news is that there's not a lot of variation, so we just have to recenter our process. This typically is easier to, to address than the next problem we're going to talk about, being incapable. So we're having lots of variation, kind of being outside of those specification limits on both sides in this case. This is much more difficult to address. Going back being off target, we can just recenter. If we're seeing excessive variation, it's much more difficult to address. Ideally, this is where we want to be. Uh, we want to have minimal variation and our process to be centered. So here's another way of thinking about it. If our specification limits were the yellow lines on a highway, would a van or a motorcycle have higher process capability? It's going to be a motorcycle. They've got more room to deviate left or right and still be within customer, uh, customer specification limits. There's still some safety room there. Now let's talk about capability measures, the ways that we measure our process capability. Now there's really two categories of measurements. We have uh, a measurement of our potential and the measurement of our reality. So our CP and our PP, or our potential measurements, that's our capability if the process was perfectly centered. It's the best our process could be, our potential. And our reality is our CPK and our PPK. It's the capability regardless of whether our process is centered right now or not. It's the current process capability relative to our specification limits. Now, the only difference between these is that the CP and the CPK are short-term measurements, and the PP and the PPK are long-term measurements. Here's another way of thinking about it. So here's the potential for your burger, your CP and your PP. This is what it could be. But oftentimes, this is what your reality is, your CPK and your PPK. Now, here's the, how the calculations are set up. So with CP or PP, we're going to take our upper specification limit and subtract our lower specification limit and divide it by six sigma, six standard deviations. Now, when it comes to CPK or PPK, our calculation is going to change based on what the closest specification limit is. So if our closest specification limit is the upper specification limit, we're going to take the upper specification limit and subtract the sample mean, that's the x with the bar over it, and then divide that by 3 sigma. But if our lower specification limit is the closest limit, we're going to take our mean and subtract the lower specification limit and then divide by 3 sigma. 
Now, the recommended values for process capability will vary a little bit by industry and by opinion, but here's just a good reference, uh, and it's broken out here by whether it's an existing process, a new process, or a Six Sigma quality process for reference, and also as to whether it's a two-sided specification or one-sided. Is there a are there two limits or is there one? Now for an existing process where there's two-sided specification limits, a recommended capability is 1.33 or greater. And whenever it comes to capability, the higher value, uh, when it's higher, it's a more capable process. That's what we're looking for. And for a new process that's two-sided, we'd like to see 1.5 or greater. So thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more, don't forget to check out the free Lean Six Sigma certification course at sixsigmasociety.org.